From the point of view of a bank CEO, what does the American economy look like? I'm Jack Otter, and I'm here with the bank CEO, Brian Moynihan of Bank of America. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, what do you see from your perch in North Carolina looking at your business? Well, first, thanks for having me, Jack. Um, you know, what we see is we see our consumers spending more money than they did last year uh, on their debit and credit cards, 5% plus, uh, in general, 3% plus. And so they're good. They're spending money uh, on services, on goods. Uh, and things like that. We're seeing our corporate customers, our commercial customers, they feel pretty good. Um, the credit quality has been great. Uh, they're not seeing stress in their business. Uh, but it's all consistent with a one and a half, two percent growth economy. And so the question will be as we move through the year, will the economy grow faster? Our prediction is 17 better than 16. But we've got to make sure that happens, and I think that will keep, uh, keep people excited and people out there doing things. So that increase is probably due more to optimism that something will happen than anything that actually has happened? Well, I think, I think the 2% level is more sort of fundamentally built in on sort of the, the growth rate from last year and the momentum during the year pickup. I think the belief would be if, if some of the policies uh, got through, the optimism that is there already that you see in the numbers uh, for those policies, if some got through, that you see a kick to that. Um, we'll see if that happens. I mean, it, there's a lot of work going on. It, they're hard. They're difficult topics. But I think the 2% doesn't probably include any you know, extra for any th new policies. Gotcha. So of those new policies, can you say what you might like to see that would maybe bump that 2% up to 25 Could we get there? Three? Well, when I talk to our commercial clients, uh, our companies that you know employ millions of people and do lots of things, it's, it's about... I'd say about tax reform and the ability to make sure they can operate around the world and, and be able to uh, put capital work and, and create jobs in the United States and elsewhere and fill final demand and know that the taxation is rational. That's their number one concern. And I'd say their second concern is just general regulation. If, if they, can, they, need to, they believe that regulation was holding them back from being successful, that, it, that the pendulum which had to swing swung a little too far. Um, and now they want to see it righted, and, and, they, and every industry has their own particular elements of that, but that's, that's what they're after. And we can do that. We can swing that pendulum a little back without causing an economic crash or polluting the environment. There's, there's room for it to go, right, without hurting things? I, I think there's good room for uh, an assessment of the cost-benefit analysis in the, in the deep facts behind some of this. And so, like anything else, you get a momentum behind it, it swings. In the banking regulation, it swung, and now you can bring it back a little bit. But remember, in our, especially in our industry, we have to have more capital than we had before the crisis. We have twice as much. We have four times as much liquidity. So a lot of the rules, the question, did you go too far? And I think there's an honest debate uh, from everybody of whether we need to balance them a little bit. It, that little bit of balance means a lot to people. It means that the government is in it to help them, not necessarily to regulate them. An uh, interesting point came up in our earlier conversation uh, about what the private economy can do for some of these goals that government's also achieving. You talked about things like green bonds and how you are able to help your business while also, say, helping the sure. environment. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. You know, the broad purview is, uh, you know, different people talk about it, public-private partnerships or uh, social capital or community capital or development capital. And all those words mean a lot the same thing. But in the environmental space you asked about directly, you know, we've got a $120 billion environmental program. We did the first U.S. green bond for a bank. We've done now, it for our clients. $120 billion is a lot of money. I mean, that's yeah. real up there on the S&P 500. Right. Well, 60 of it's out already, yep. round numbers, and we've been driving it. And it's nothing new. It's a part of our core business. So it's, it's green bond financing. It's the work we do to uh, directly finance through our loans and deposits uh, or through our loans to uh, uh, providers of, uh, of new types of uh, hydroelectric, of, of wind power, of, of uh, alternative uh, uh, drive cars, all those types of things, and, and driving that. And then helping people do cogeneration and other activities and make their buildings more green. So we, we stack that all up, and that, that ends up to be $60 billion so far. Um, We've done a study with the United Nations uh, that uh, was commissioned about uh, sustainable energy for all. It, it takes a tremendous amount of investment, and I think the Paris Accords identified that. That's the $100 billion of annual commitment. It takes maybe three-quarters of a trillion dollars a year of new investment. So our $100 billion is big. It's a small part of what's needed to drive this, but it's all for a good, cause, a good reason, which is to make our Earth a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, but also allow for development. And interestingly, I mean, outwardly looking, you, you have a lot of reasons why that's a good thing, but you said inwardly it's good for the bank because your employees appreciate it. Yeah, I think we, how we govern ourselves as a company is important to us. And so our employees 
uh, like the fact that we become more efficient, not only how we operate. So our building here in New York is a, was a first LEED Platinum certified skyscraper uh, in the world. And, and, and you know, our employees like that. They like to work in a building in a building that shows that, that it's committed to things they're committed to. So you start with simple things like that and you work through the more complex things about printing less and you know, how, they, how they use power themselves and all, that, all those types of things, and you're driving that down. But importantly, they would like to see the impact we have in society. They, they work for a great company. They are great people. They like to see us do good things. Uh, and to help them understand how it connects to the business side, the community side, and sharing our success with our communities is very important. Thanks very much, Brian. Thank you.